right? It shows how profitable a company really is. And so we look at uh, profit, profit margin, which um, you know is like net income divided um, by sales. Then we look at gross profit margin. We look at return on assets and return on equity. And here are the different ways of calculating those uh, profitability ratios. Then we also look at asset utilization ratios. And we say that these ratios show how effectively a company uses its assets. And we look at receivable turnover, average collection period, inventory turnover, inventory holding period, accounts payable turnover, accounts payable period, capital asset turnover, and total asset turnover. And again, you can see how uh, these, these different uh, ratios were calculated. Uh, receivable turnover, for example, was uh, credit sales divided by, by receivable. And of course, we say that it tells you how long on average do customers account stay on the book. So how long, um, how long do you keep your receivables for before you're able to turn it into cash? And the shorter that time span is a more favorable, right? Because what you want is cash. So if I can turn my receivable into cash quite quickly, then um, I'm more favorable. I'm more favorable than someone who takes much longer time. Uh, equally with your inventory, um, there is inventory costs in keeping um, in storing inventory. You have storage fee. You have, um, you could lose uh, inventory because of spoilage because there's some time limit on how long you can keep it for. So, and there's also cost in purchasing of, and um, in both purchasing and delivering of inventory. So, as we will study um, in later chapters, you look at the economic order quantity, you will see what an efficient amount is that um, should be purchased from uh, an, an efficient amount of, of uh, inventory that should be purchased on each order. So we say that inventory turnover really uh, it measures the sales per dollar of inventory and the efficiency of inventory order and cost control methods. And uh, again, if you can turn that inventory over fast enough, then it's, it seems as, uh, as favorable in terms of your, your inventory turnover, as well as your inventory holding period, if you are able to hold that inventory for a shorter uh, time before it is turned into cash, uh, before it is turned into seal, because um, not necessarily turned into cash when it turns into seal. Okay, so accounts, Payable turnover is the opposite, I would say, of um, accounts of accounts receivable turnover because accounts payable turnover is where you're paying for goods that uh, were actually purchased, for example, your inventory. Now, the idea here is that um, if you can slow down the ability to turn it into cash, into sorry, the ability to pay for it, so you can turn down, if you can reduce if you can extend the number of days that such inventory, such uh, accounts payable is, will be on the books, then you actually is getting a credit um, from your, your, your suppliers. And as opposed to bank credit, you're actually using, um, actually using the, the credit, trade credit. And so when we go on to study to look at um, sources of short-term financing, we will look at the idea of using, say, trade credit versus, say, bank credit. And so again, so more favorable if you are able to extend the, the time in which uh, such credit is held um, as versus if you uh, if you are paying much too quickly. The capital turnover again. You can see is there 
appropriate amount of capital being deployed in the firm to support sales? Or are there reinvestments that are being made? Is, is, is it occurring at the right time to support sales? And that's what we are measuring when we look at capital turnover or total asset turnover. And now we have liquidity ratios and with, with liquidity ratios, we are measuring um, whether or not the company will be able to meet it at its short-term obligation, right? Um, so its current ratio looks at current assets versus current liabilities and a quick ratio, which is uh, a more a stringent or a tighter measure, looks at current asset less the most illiquid of those uh, current assets, which is inventory, uh, divided by current liabilities. Then we have the debt utilization ratios. And of course, we have debt to total assets. Um, we have time interest earned and uh, fixed charge coverage. And in terms of debt to total assets, it's total asset divided by total debt. And in this case, we're measuring to see how much is this company um, financing its asset by debt? What portion of its asset are financed by uh, a debt? And, and the other side of that is what percentage of its assets are financed by capital. And of course, it, it uh, for just like a rule of, of thumb, it you would like that debt to asset to be uh, uh, below 50%. Um, again, it depends on the industry. Some industry like the banking industry has very high debt to asset ratio, um, but most industries it would be a rule of thumb would be um, debt to asset ratio of less than 50%. Then we have time interest earned. And here we are looking to see if the company is able to, to cover its, its interest. Um, the interest that it's actually going to pay. Can it actually pay it? How many, how many times can it cover that interest from its, its operating income? So it is income before interest and taxes, and and then that will be divided by uh, by interest. Equally, fixed interest a coverage is taking out those um, fixed charges. That will actually, whether the company is operating or not, the company will have to pay. So whether it's operating at full capacity, half capacity or zero capacity, it would still require to pay uh, fixed charges. And how much would these, um, can the company from its, its operating income cover those fixed charges? And of course, we went on to look on um, an example. So today, what we are going to do is to work some questions that, um, that were posted and hopefully this will further explain it and help us to um, further understand the topic. So are there any questions for me so far? No, it should be good. Okay. Yeah, none here. All right, so let's take a look at the questions that, um, that were posted. So you guys can see my screen, right? Um, and if you can't, these questions were actually posted, so you should be able to, to um, you, you actually have them there, so you should be able to download them. Okay, so the first question says that Jim Kovacs company makes supplies for school, and it says sales in 2019 were 4 million, Asset were as follows, and it gave us cash, accounts receivable, inventory, new plant and equipment, and of course, total assets. 
So then we're asked to find compute account receivable turnover, inventory turnover, capital asset turnover, and total assets turnover. All right, so given our example that we have um, had in our lecture and so on, I'll, I'll give you guys an opportunity to try this question and then we will do it together. So I'll give you uh, a short question. So let's say two minutes and then we'll do it together. One more minute. Professor. Uh -huh. For inventory turnover, uh, for cost of goods sold, how do we find that with the information given? In some in some cases, you can use um, sales rather than cost of goods sold. So if you're not given sale, if you're not given cost of goods sold, you should use sales. Okay. Okay, guys. Are you finished? You need more time? Maybe one more minute. Okay. All right, you should be finished now, right? All right, so let's try and write these out 
uh, uh, together. So the first one asks for accounts receivable turnover. So accounts receivable turnover equal to sales over accounts receivable, right? And for, and for those are, are, of you who are having difficulty um, reading my, my handwriting, I'll post the solutions after we have finished class um, in more in, in type format. So we have 4 million in seals. And that will be uh, divided by, oh, come on. I'm not having so much difficulty with this. 800,000 in receivable. And so that would be five times. So that's A. Now uh, number one. Number two, inventory turnover. And uh, as I said before, if we're not given, since we weren't given a uh, cost of goods sold, we are going to use sales. Cost of goods sold is not given, we, we use sales. However, if you are making a comparison between two companies, you have to make sure that they're both using the same thing. They're both using the same ratio. So if you if you're going to use sales over inventory then you need to make sure that equally compare with the other company the other company is using sales over inventory for their inventory turnover so inventory turnover will be equal to inventory of 4 million over uh, sorry that's sales of 4 million inventory of 400,000 and that should give us 10 times So next, we have fixed asset turnover. Equal to sales over net plant and uh, equipment or sales over fixed asset or sales over capital asset. So let's say sales over net plant and equipment. Right, and I is right there. Net plant and equipment. So sales divided by net plant and equipment. In our case, it sales again remain, remains at 4 million. And net plant and equipment, 500,000. So that gives us 2.2 times. I think that's incorrect. I think that should be eight times. A. 
Are you guys following me? So, Professor, for the capital asset turnover, is that the same as fixed asset turnover? Yeah. Okay. So it could be called capital asset turnover, fixed asset turnover, and um, because there are just different ways of calling the same asset. It's capital assets, long-term asset, fixed assets. Those are all uh, different names of referring to the same asset, uh, same asset class. Okay. All right, so we're down to the fourth one, which is total asset turnover. And total assets turnover is equal to sales. Keep jumping my E right there, I don't know why. Over total asset. And again, sales still remains at 4 million. And total asset would be 1.8 million. One point, okay, let's try it one point. Yeah. Okay, and that gives us two point two times. So that's of the first question. Um, wasn't really too difficult. Um, I hope. But you guys can let me know um, if you're clear on all of that, or do I need to do I need to go back over? Uh, no, I think we're okay. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. All right, let's move on to uh, the next question. In this case, the balance sheet for Bryan Corporation is given below. Sales for the year were 3,440,000 uh, with 75% of sales sold on credit. So if 75% if of the sales are sold on credit, what happened to the other 25%? Anyone? Anyone? 25% cash. Right, so 25% would have been received on cash on the day of sale. Okay, so our balance sheet is at, as at December 31st, 2019. And so um, last week when we look at the balance sheet, we, lose, we use a, a, a column format in the balance sheet, but this balance sheet today is presented in more like a T format, where on the left hand side there are assets, and on the right hand side there's a liabilities and equity. So we can see what well, is cash, um, account receivable inventory, plant and equipment, and of course total assets. And on the other side we have accounts payable, accrued in taxes. Bond paper, and it says long term, common stock retained earnings, and uh, of course, total retained, total liabilities and equity. And then it says compute the following ratios current ratio, quick ratio, debt to asset ratio, asset turnover ratio, and average collection period. Okay, so let's Give, let's give you guys five minutes to see what numbers you can come up with. Would you like me to show the question on one page or are you guys all having a question in front of you? All right, let me try and show it on one page. It's probably better for everyone.
a professor. Oh. For the debt to total assets ratio, um, what is defined as debt in our balance sheet? What is defined as debt in our balance sheet? Okay, so debt would represent all our liabilities, right? Huh? Yeah. Okay, so if we if we look at, at our uh, balance sheet and identify the items that are debt, we would see that those items, um, which ones would we would you pick? Um. So you have accounts with accounts payable, right? Because I'm looking at the right hand side of the balance sheet, right? Yeah. So we have accounts payable, and there we know that that's a liability, right? Our debt, because uh, we know our liabilities are. Debt is just another name for liabilities. So yeah. we know accounts payable is a liability. We have accrued taxes. So because everything on the on the left hand on the right hand side of the balance sheet is either classified as debt or it's classified as um, as equity. So we know accrued taxes, meaning taxes that are outstanding. So taxes that it's like I file my, my taxes but I didn't pay the, the amount that, was, um, that I should have paid when I filed my taxes. That's what accrued taxes is. So it's taxes that's outstanding to be paid. So that's a liability. So bonds payable is also a liability. It's a long-term um, bond. Um, so it's not a current liability, but it's a long-term liability. And the other two items on the balance sheet would be common stock, which we know is equity. And we also know that retained earnings is also equity. So our, our debt would be 220,000 plus 30,000, that's make 250 plus 150,000 and therefore 400,000. Okay. okay, thank you. Yep, that makes sense. Also, I had another question just for D. It says asset turnover. Um, which asset turnover is it referring to? Well, it says, um, did it not say total assets? But even if it didn't say total assets, if it says assets turnover, then um, we have to think about total assets. Unless it identifies okay. unless it identifies single out and a particular class of asset, then it's total assets. Okay, it's always assumed as total assets. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's run through the question and see if we can um, can get the answers. And if we start with with Let's see if I can share my screen here. All right, so here is uh, Bryant Corporation and uh, we are asked to find A, its current asset, its current ratio, sorry. So let me just write A here, B. So we know that current ratio would be current assets over current liabilities. And from our balance sheet, we can see, we need to identify our current assets, right? So we know cash is a current asset, right? And we also know accounts receivable and inventory. Because we have only four items there and we know that plant and equipment would be considered to be a long-term asset or a capital asset. So that would not be a current asset. So in this case, we have cash of 60, accounts receivable of 240, and inventory of 350. So that gives us 650,000 over 
our liabilities and we look for our current liabilities and our current liabilities would be 240 plus 30 and that's 250,000. So that gives us 250,000. So our current ratio would be 650 divided by 250, which is uh, 2.6 times. So next, we have a quick ratio. Now we say the quick ratio is much stringent because what the quick ratio is saying, listen, if I take out my most liquid, my most illiquid asset, the asset that I have the most difficulty getting rid of, if I should remove that, am I still able to cover my current obligations? Will I be able to meet my current obligations if I remove that, uh, the most difficult asset, that, uh, current assets that I have? And so it's removed and it's called the acid test. We remove current uh, inventory. So, sorry, remove inventory and current inventory. Remove inventory from current assets. And that should leave us with 650 minus inventory of 350,000. And of course, we're still going to divide by current liabilities that haven't changed. So it's 650 minus 350 over 250. That gives us 300,000 divided by 250,000. And therefore, we have 1.2 times. So in terms of C, we have debt to total assets. And that is equal to total debt over total assets. We know that total debt is 400,000, as I was explaining before, because um, when we say total debt, we are just another word for total liabilities. And uh, you look on your balance sheet and we know that the only two items on the right-hand side that, that's equity are common stock and retained earnings. So therefore, everything else would be uh, liabilities. So 220 plus 30 plus 150, which is 400,000. And of course, we know that the total liabilities was, sorry, the total assets was 1,060,000. Over our total, our total debt of And I think I'm setting it out incorrectly here. I need to have my total debt on top and not on the bottom. So let's, let's change this. So our total debt is 400,000. And our total assets is one six zero zero zero. So we have thirty eight times. Oh, sorry, not times, but percent. So it means that thirty eight percent of the, our assets are financed by debt and the remaining 62% uh, 60, is actually um, capital. So it, it could be said that this company is very well capitalized 
uh, it has a six to, uh, above 60 percent of capital um, being invested in a company and only 38 percent of, of debt so what do we have next we have asset turnover Assets turnover would be sales over total assets. And in this case, we know our sales to be three million and forty thousand. And our total assets would be one million and sixty thousand. So that represents two point eight seven times. So E is asking us for average collection period, right? E says average collection period. Average collection period. Okay, so average collection period is equal to what? Accounts receivable over average daily credit sales. Conceivable over average daily credit sales. And we know the conceivable to be 240,000. And now we need average daily credit sales. So, how do we find average daily credit sales? We know that's 75% of sales was on credit. So we need 75%. And then this will be divided by 365. So this, we can reduce it to 240,000 over 6247, and this should be 38.42 days. It means that every, every, every 38.42 days, um, the credit, sales or the receivables are, are turned into, into cash. Be able to collect your receivables after every 38.42 days.
Okay, so that's wrap up um, Brian Corporation. So is there any question with regards to those answers? Nope, seem good. No. Okay, all right, awesome. So let's jump to question number number three. Right, if I can switch share here. Okay, that's not the one. Let's see if I can close the question. I not see it. All right, guys, do you have a question in front of you? Because mine is not opening. I'm not sure what I want to be able to share it. Maybe I have some uh, questions. Question one. Oh. Uh, let me see if I can bring it up again. Oh, there you go. Now it's here. All right. All right, so now it's it's up. So it's question number three. Let me just put it on one page. So it says Simmons Corporation income statement is given below. So what is the time interest earned ratio and what would be the fixed coverage charge ratio? So in this case, we are asked to find the time interest, which is one of our debt utilization ratio, the time interest current ratio and another one would be a fixed what would be the fixed charge coverage all right let's quickly run through this one together All right, so this is question number three. And it's Simon's Corporation. Nice to own. Huh? Yeah, to own. Times interest earned times interest earned is equal to income before interest and taxes or earnings before interest and taxes, which is also known as operating income over interest. So if we look at our question, 
we'll see that you can easily identify earnings before interest and taxes. We have income before interest and taxes to be 60,000, and then we have interest of 12,000. So that would be 60,000 over 12,000. And that would be five times. And that's for A. And for B, it's fixed charge coverage. And fixed charge coverage would be income before fixed charges and taxes. And taxes over so that's taxes, guys, right at the end there. And that would be over fixed charges. So in this case, we again go to our balance sheet. Sorry, not our balance sheet, our income statement, just to see what the income statement says. So it, the income statement as it shows us that income before interest and taxes of 60,000 also includes uh, fixed charges of 24,000. So 24,000 were is included, uh, 24,000 fixed charges are included in our income before interest and taxes. So given that it was taken out, it means that we, it needs to be added. So in that case, it would be 60,000 plus 24,000 over fixed charges of 12,000 plus 24,000. Okay, so this company is able to cover its fixed charges from its its um, its earnings uh, before interest and taxes. Uh, it's able and uh, fixed charges able to cover its fixed charges by two point three three times, and it's also able to cover its fixed its fixed charges. Um, sorry, its interest. from earnings before taxes, before interest on taxes by five times. So it's able to meet those obligations, those fixed charges obligation that it may incur, that it may, uh, it has to fulfill sometime in the future. All right, so that answer our question three. So let's move on to question four. In question four, it says the, the global corporate, um, before I go, sorry, yeah, was there any question with regards to those? And I wanna jump ahead without, um, maybe someone has something they wanted to ask. Anything? 
Answers no? Okay. Yeah, you are hearing me, guys, right? Yep. Yeah, we are. Okay. And you're also following, you're not um off doing something else or uh, browsing the web on something else. We're paying attention. Okay. All right. So let's move on to question four. So in question four, it says Global Product Corporation. Oh, let me bring it up here so you guys can see. The Global Product Corporation has three subsidiaries. So it has um, it has a medical supplies subsidiary, it has a, a heavy machinery subsidiary, and an electronics uh, subsidiary. And we have sales for each um, of those subsidiaries: um, twenty million in the case of medical supplies, uh, five million in terms of heavy machinery and electronics, uh, four million. So based on those, um, we also know what the net income is after tax. It's 1.2 million for the medical side, um, 190,000 for heavy machinery and electronics was 320,000. And of course it shows that the assets uh, are that are invested in each, in each group or each um, subsidiary. So it says A, which division has uh, the lowest return on asset? So then B, which division has the highest return on asset? So uh, it means that we could um, do A and B almost in one. Then it says compute return on asset for the entire corporation. And if 8 million invested, in the heavy machinery division is sold and re redeployed in the medical supply subsidiary at the same rate of uh, uh, return on asset. So currently achieved in the medical um, supplies division, what will be the new return on asset for the entire corporation? Okay, so let, let me see you guys take a uh, a first crack at it. I'm here to take questions as you try to to do it, and then we will will um, try to do it together. But let's let's you do. Let's see you make the first attempt. So the return on sales is only dependent upon the net income, or is it? Uh, can you speak a little louder, Kiran? Um, uh, you're kind of low. The return on sales is only dependent upon the, or, or yeah, the, the return on sales is only dependent upon the net income. Um, so these figures would not be the only figures in the income statement, right? These figures would have been extracted from an income statement. So the return on uh, uh, the net in um, the the profit margin. Um, here are the return and sales as you're asking would be based on these numbers, but it wouldn't just depend on these numbers. These numbers would have been extracted from uh, the income statement or the balance sheet. Did I answer your yeah. question or, or that didn't clear up your question? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Uh, professor, uh -huh. for C, for computing the ROA of the entire corporation, yeah. do we just take the average of the three divisions? Um, you would probably you probably could get the correct answer if you do the weighted average, but it's maybe easier to do it another way than do the weighted average. So it's up to you. Well, I don't think you could do a simple average and get the correct answer. I think you'd have to go for like a weighted average. Uh, 
how would we compute it then? Well, you, you could know what the total assets are, right? And you could also know what the total income is. Oh, I see. I see. My bad. Mm -hmm. Yep, that makes sense. Hey guys, I finish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what did you have for your return on sales? For your um, yeah, return on sales. Uh, Three point eight percent for the lowest. One eight. I don't know. I don't have point eight. Um, and which one did you get point eight for? Uh, the heavy machinery. Okay. Um, no, I don't have point eight. Let's see how. Let's see how we we can work it. Would anyone else have another another answer? Three point eight. Yeah, three point eight is what I got as well. Yeah. All right, so 3.8 sounds, um, sounds correct for the lowest one. So remember what we're finding the return on sales. So that would be net income over sales. 
return on sales, net income over sales. So in the, in the case of, um, of medical, we have net income of 1.2 million and we have sales of 20 million. So we have one, two, how did I change this? Okay, 1.2 million over 20 uh, million. And that should give the uh, 6%. In the case of heavy machinery, we have sales of 5 million and we have net income of 190,000 over 5 million. And that gave us 3.8%. Um, and in the case of the electronics, we have say we have uh, an income of three hundred and twenty thousand, and we have we have sales of four million. So that means we have a return on sales of eight percent. So what's next? It says, which division has the highest return on assets? So return on assets, in this case, we're going to have net income less of the B, so let me just put a B right here, and less of the A. So this will be net income over assets. Uh, it's easier we just say total assets. And again, we know that net income for this division would be 1.2 million. And we know that Total assets would be eight hundred eight million. So that gives us fifteen percent. In heavy machinery, we have total assets. We have an income of one hundred and ninety thousand. And we have total assets of also 8 million. And that gives us 2.375%. And here we have in electronics, we have income of 320 and assets of 3 million. And that gives us 10.56, So that's far as B is concerned. So are we clear on those so far? So we can identify that the medical division has the highest return on asset, right? So it says compute the return. Um, uh -huh. I'm just trying to figure out how you got like, you took I'm essentially with this a value of 12 divided by eight and got 15%. 
Oh, okay. no, it's, it's 1.5. Okay. No, it's 15%. Okay. So it's 15%, right? It's 1.2 million over 8 million. Yeah, okay with that now, Kiran? I'm just... So we have net income of, of, um, of 1.2 million. Yeah, no, no, I'm seeing it, sorry. Okay. And, sorry, okay. Um, I'm looking at the wrong one. Wait, wait, wait here, let's see what we have here. Right, it's 1.2 million over, over 8 million, yeah. And that should give us, let's check here. Make sure I'm giving you the right numbers. One, two, divided by eight. All right, fifteen percent. Okay. All right. So can I go on now? Can I go to part C? Yes. Okay. So in C, it says compute the return on asset for the entire uh, corporation. So we know what the total income is for the corporation. So we can say, corporation income will equal to the income the sum of all the income from the different uh, 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 subsidiaries. So it's 1.2 million plus 190 plus 320,000. So that means that uh, the total income would be 1,700,000. And we know that the corporate, the corporation total assets I could say corporate assets is equal to eight million plus eight million plus Three million. Oh, that's three million. And when we sum these three, we get a total of when we sum these three, so let's write this, let me sure write this properly. We get a total of 19 million. So therefore, ROA is equal to 1.710 million over 19 million is equal to 0 0.09 or 9.0 0 percent. So in my mind, that's the easiest way, uh, the, the, the simplest way to find the return on assets. So let's do D. And D, D says, 
If the $8 million invested in heavy uh, machinery division is sold and redeployed in medical supplies subsidiary at the same rate of the return on asset achieved in the medical division, what will be the return on assets for the entire corporation? So based on, on that, we know that um, $8 million will be redeployed from the, from the heavy machinery into the, into the, the, the medical supplies. So return on deployed asset and the medical supplies, um, they said it will be at the same rate as what uh, the return on asset is for currently for the medical supply. So the return on redeployed asset would be 15 percent right so we know if return on redeployed assets is going to be 15 percent and we know that we have 800 8 million so therefore the income that we will receive or the return would be 1 million right so therefore the new income so the new corporate income would be 1.2 million plus 1.2 million plus uh, the income from the electronics division of 320,000. Going on here. Um, okay, there we go. It's fine. All right, so based on that, we know. Uh, that the total income would be two million seven twenty thousand. The asset hasn't changed, right? All we do was to take redeploy asset from from the, the heavy equipment to the medical uh, uh, subsidiary. So therefore, in, total. Uh, in question, in question B, didn't we calculate the highest ROI for medical supplies to be ten point six seven percent? No, it was fifteen percent. Oh, it was ten point six seven for electronics. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, sorry, I mixed that up. Okay, all right. So we know the total assets already. It's supposed to be 19 million, right? Because all we did was to redeploy. We didn't get, we didn't uh, reduce the number of assets or increase it. We just redeploy. So therefore, return an asset is equal to our 273 over our 19 million. And that gives us one, four, three, two, or fourteen point three two percent. All right, any question? 
Any issue with that? Yeah, I just have a question. Um, how come the assets are still worth eight million if we sold, or nineteen million if we sold eight million of them? Well, that's what I'm saying, right? We, we didn't get, we didn't um, reduce the number of assets. All we did was to redeploy. So we have eight million dollars worth of assets invested in, in um, heavy equipment. So that was sold, but the entire eight million. So the assumption is that you receive the eight million, right? So the entire 8 million that was received was then invested in the medical supplies. So it was redeployed into medical supplies. So the okay. total amount of asset didn't change. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, any other question? All right. So let's move on to our next question, which would be, where am I? Question five. All right, so question five. Question five asks us to construct a current asset section. It says, construct a current asset section of a balance sheet from the following data. So here we are given data terms of um, yearly sales, 420,000, inventory, turnover, seven times, and, and daily teller inventory turnover from sales, seven times, current liabilities, current ratio, quick ratio, average collection period to be 36 days. So find current uh, find cash, accounts receivable inventory, and total assets. All right, guys, two minutes. And let's see you try. Then we, we try to do it together. So take two minutes and see. I uh, take three minutes and see what you have. Sorry, Professor, could I ask another question about the previous question we just did? Sure. Um, just for 4D kind of confused about the income how did the heavy machinery income become one million two hundred thousand because wouldn't the, uh, the how i'm no, understanding no, no, is no, they put, didn't. so the heavy machinery was that that division was sold so it's no longer okay. uh, it's no longer part of the subsidiary but what the question says was that um that eight million that would be invested in the medical supplies, it would earn the same return on assets. So, so okay. it would earn the same return on assets as the medical supplies. The other eight million that was initially invested in, in the medical supplies. So therefore, it's going to maintain the same return on assets of fifteen percent. Okay. So based so on that, that other. Sorry, that other eight million got put into medical supplies. It right. has the same income. Same okay. income, right? It will generate the same amount of income. Yeah. Okay. Yep, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay.
Okay, guys, are you finished? Either we didn't understand it or we're finished. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's see what you have. So what do you have for cash? Huh? Kiran? Was it Kiran who was I, I, I was in the uh, I didn't understand bubble. Is that cash minus liabilities? So uh, three hundred forty thousand. I know. All right. So let's let's look at the question and see. Let's let's break the question down from um, from what we have. So let's let me just go back to the question here. Okay, so this is what we're given. We're given some items and we're asked to find the current assets section of the balance sheet. So we look and what is there it says cash, account receivable, inventory, and those are three items, and that would give us the total current assets. So now if we look at what we're given, we're given sales. We're told that it's credit sales, we're given inventory turnover, and we say it's um from sales, current liabilities, quick ratio, and uh, current ratio. Also average collection period. So it's always we're trying to figure out where to start, which item can we start with? So if we look at current assets, total current assets, we could determine total current assets based on the current ratio and the current liabilities, all right? So if we go back to the current ratio, we know the current ratio is equal to current assets over current liabilities. So based on that, we can determine current assets. So let's try to see how we can work that out. So current assets, is that equal to two, right? Because current assets is current ratio is two and the current liabilities is 80,000. For therefore, current assets must be equal to two times that, two times current liabilities, agree? Go on, see how I get that? Uh, yeah. Okay. So therefore, total current assets must be 160,000. So everything there must sum to 160,000. So we know now that all three are going to sum to 160,000. So now that we know uh, current assets, we, are, we were also given the quick ratio to equal to 1.25. So we know that the current asset without, um, without inventory, so we can find current assets, sorry, without inventory. So current, assets without inventory we equal 
would equal to 1.25 times 8 to 1000. So therefore, current assets are those quick assets would therefore equal to uh, 100,000. So if we know what the quick assets are, in terms of what is equal to, and if we know what current assets are, then we know what inventory is, right? So we know therefore that inventory would equal to 160,000 minus 100,000. So now we know that inventory is uh, 60,000, not 600,000. Okay, so now we need to find accounts receivable. So accounts receivable, if we go back to our accounts receivable, we know that um, that Accounts receivable turnover is equal to, we know that accounts um, receivable turnover is equal to what? Is equal to, uh, sorry, not accounts receivable turnover, average collection period is equal to accounts receivable over average daily credit sales. So therefore, accounts receivable would equal to Average collection period multiplied by average daily credit sales. So therefore, conceivable equal to average daily credit sales four hundred and sixty thousand over. 365 multiply by 36 and that's equal to 41 4 2 5 so that's left us with only one thing to find and if we have one unknown we know that's that's um pretty easy. So therefore, we know total assets to be 100, total current assets to be 160. And then we just going to minus everything else that we have found. Um, inventory minus accounts receivable. Minus Um, right, so yeah, there's no more to be added there. It's just to find what's not equal to. All right, so, and that gives us cash of 58,000. Five seven five. Okay, everyone is clear on that? Yeah. 
All right, guys, we come to our final question. What's the date? And this question. It said Shannon Corporation has sales of 750,000. All on credit and gross and cost of goods sold of 500,000. Given the following ratio, given the following ratios, fill in the balance sheet below. So now we are given these ratios and we're asked to do the balance sheet. So it's pretty similar to the one we just did. So that should be a little easier for you guys. So let me see you at least um, get a few of them. Hey, right, Professor, could we go back to the last question just for a second? Sure. I just missed the end of it. You want to go back to the, the whiteboard? Yes, please. Great, perfect. Okay. I got it, thank you. So again, you could start from trying, by trying to find total assets. And if you know total assets, you also know total debt plus shareholders equity. So you could write those two down first. And then you could try to find items that are uh, a percentage of total assets. For example, it says cash to total assets, 2%. So you could then find cash. And after cash, you could try to find um, accounts receivable. And then inventory. And of course, if you find those three, then you know what uh, total current assets are, and then you, you know what capital assets.
Right, guys, I finish. Have you have you gotten um, total assets? Yeah. And what did you get for total assets for the person who got it? Uh, I got three hundred thousand. Okay. Yeah, I got that too. Same here. Okay, good. So, did you get the cash? Six thousand. Mm -hmm. Did you get um, accounts receivable? Seventy-five thousand. And what about inventory? Fifty thousand. Okay, good. So you finished one side of the balance sheet then. What's capital assets? And sixty-nine thousand. Awesome. So you finish. You're, you're completely done with the balance sheet. How did we get accounts receivable? So uh, accounts receivable could be found by taking you have um, sales over accounts receivable, right? And that's uh, a 10 times, uh, where is that? Let me go to exactly here. It says, accounts receivable turnover is 10 times, right? And accounts receivable turnover is sales over accounts receivable. So if accounts receivable is 10 times, uh, sorry, uh, accounts turnover is 10 times, then we know we can find receivable because accounts because uh, because uh, accounts receivable turnover is ten times and we know accounts receivable turnover is equal to sales over accounts receivable. Because therefore, accounts receivable is equal to to sales divided by ten. And you could use a similar um, thing using uh, using an inventory turnover to find inventory. The only difference is that in using inventory turnover, you're going to use cost of goods sold rather than um, rather than sales. So it's cost of goods sold over inventory will give you your inventory turnover, which is ten times. All right, so let's work the question. Uh, let's work it together. Hi. All right, we can just do it here. It's probably easier. We have the balance sheet right in front of us. So let's try. So we have um, total assets, and we say that total assets would be two times, the so total asset turnover would be 2.5 times, right? And we know that total asset turnover is equal to sales over total assets. So therefore, total assets would be they have sales of seven hundred and fifty thousand, right? So total assets is going to be. equal to 750,000 over 2.5. So 750,000 over 2.5, and that gives us 300,000, which we put here as total assets. So let's say 300, and 
200, uh, 200 keys. Because it's a balance sheet, we also know that this side would also be 300 keys. So now we can go about filling in the others. So if we start with cash, cash would be 2% of total assets. So it is 2% of 300,000, and that's how we get our 6,000. Everyone following me so far? Apart from those who are sleeping. Okay. All right, let's move to receivable turnover. Receivable turnover, which is sales over account receivable 10 times. And so we know sales to be 750,000. And we know that a sales over a cons receivable is equal to 10 times. So therefore a cons receivable must be equal to 750 divided by 10. And that gave us our 75,000. So, um, equal to 750 over 10 equal to 75. This is equal to 300,000. So that's how we found those two. Similarly, we know that inventory would equal to inventory, we have inventory turnover of 10 times, which is cost of goods sold over inventory. So therefore inventory equal to cost of goods sold divided by 10, which is 10 times, and cost of goods sold is 500,000 over 10. And therefore we have 50,000. All right, so since we know these three, since, since we know these three, we also know total current assets. So we have total current assets of We have total current assets of the sum of 6,000 6, plus 75 plus 50, which is 131,000. And based on that, we know that the difference here from 300 minus 131 will give us capital assets, and that would be 169,000. All right, so let's go on the other side. Okay, so We know the total debt, the total assets is 45%. So if we have total assets of 300,000, so then debt equal to 
300,000, right? Times 45%. And that gives us 175? No. Oh, no. Sorry, 135. Wrong, guys. No, 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 no. That's not correct. Um, let's just check to make sure we are total debt to total assets of 45%. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That's how much? How much is that? Total debt to to uh, total uh, total debt would be one thirty-five thousand. One hundred and thirty-five thousand. One thirty-five k. All right. So we know total debt. We also know that current ratio is two, right? Current ratio is two, which means that if we know our current liabilities, then we know it is two times our current debt. And our current liabilities is 131,000. So therefore, current debt would be 131,000 divided by two, and that gives us 65,500. Was just one question for you. Mm -hmm. How did you get the uh, total uh, sh total debt and shareholders' equity? It's a balance sheet. So because it's a balance oh, so sheet, right. um, what's yeah. on the left-hand <laughs> side must equal to what's on the right-hand side. So 300,000 total assets must equal to 300,000 right. total debt plus shareholders' equity. Right, right, right. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. All right. So next we have, we can find long-term debt, right? Because if we know total debt and we know current debt so we know long-term debt um, it will be 135k minus 65,500 and that would be around 69,500 All right, so based on all of that, we can now find our equity because we know what's our total, what's our total debt and equity, uh, which is 300 and we know total debt to be 135. So therefore, equity must be 300,000 minus 135,000. Um, I can't hear you. Can you speak up a little bit more, please? What numbers did you use to get uh, current debt? Oh, current debt. So current debt is, if you remember, we have a current ratio, right? We have current ratio of two times. Right. And we know what the current assets are. We know current assets is 135, right? And if current ratio is two, then current debt must be uh, must be um, half of half of total of total current assets. In other words, current assets over over current liabilities equal to two. So therefore, current assets current liabilities must equal to current uh, assets divided by two. Clear. 131 divided by 2. Right. So let me write, let me let, let me just write it here so you can see. So we have okay, yeah. Current ratio equal to 2. And what's current ratio? It's current assets over current liabilities. Right? So if that's equal to 2, then it means that the one above must be two times the one below. Right, yeah, sorry, I, I was thinking 135 divided by two. 
Yeah, so it's 131 yeah. over over uh, 2. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, so now we know that equity is equal to 300,000 minus um, 135, right? And mm -hmm. that should be 165. There you go. All right, is there any question, guys, with regards to those quest, um, numbers? Any question? Mm, uh, not for me. All right, no. so, huh? Is there a question? Go ahead. I was just saying, no, I didn't have a question. Okay. All right, so I have two additional questions that I'm going to post for you guys to do. Um, I will also post the solutions to them, but I, I won't post the solutions at the same time. So I'll give you some, a chance to do them first. And if you don't have any questions for me, then I, I'll see you guys next week. Remember to watch the videos because um, when you watch the videos, you, you get more out of uh, the, the questions that we do then. You're better able to bring out some of the things that you would have uh, noticed in the videos. All right. So see you guys next week. Have a good week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. So, are you going to put these questions up like immediately? Um, before the end of the day. Okay, before the end of the day. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Have a good day, Professor. Thanks, you too. Bye.